The CEO of cloud computing giant Salesforce believes that corporate social activism is not bad for business. Mark Benioff is his name. He runs a company worth nearly $57 billion. That's with a B. It provides software so salespeople can keep track of their customers. Benioff slammed Indiana's governor last year over a law designed to protect religious freedom. Critics claimed it discriminated against the LGBT community. Benioff then canceled Salesforce events, threatened to pull investments, and even offered to pay for workers to move out of state. The law was amended one week later. Benioff then fought a similar bill in Georgia. He warned he would take his business elsewhere. That bill was vetoed. Benioff is now fighting North Carolina's so-called bathroom law. On Twitter, he recently encouraged people to ask their CEOs to stand against Governor Pat McCrory. Benioff called him anti-gay. Mark Benioff joins us now. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Great to be with you. So the question is, for you, why do you do this? Well, I'm doing this really on behalf of my employees. I mean, I'm a, the CEO of Salesforce, as you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm at my desk, not quite as beautiful as this one, mm -hmm. and I'm on email, and I'll get an email, or uh, someone will come in my office and say, I am being discriminated against, and you have to do something for me, and so I will... Jump but in does and anybody, help them. Does any shareholder, does anybody on your board, does anybody say, Mark, don't do that. Just yeah. run the company. Yeah. No, this is the right thing to do. We have to do this. Look, we're, we're moving from a world where it was all about, you know, being shareholder based. We're moving to a world that's all about stakeholders. And right. that, that, that's what great CEOs are working on doing. They're making that transformation. And employees are stakeholders. Well, employees are stakeholders. Customers are stakeholders. Partners, the environment is a stakeholder. Our community, our homeless in San Francisco our stakeholders, all for Salesforce. We have to look out for everyone. But Colin Powell is one of your Salesforce directors, and he has said this to you. Be careful how far you climb up that tree. Yes. It will expose mm -hmm. your backside. Right. What and do you make of well, that? A well, that is, a, yes. that is a director. General Back Powell is the director yeah. of our company, and he did call me, and he said, look, you, uh, the farther you go up the tree, the more your backside is going to be exposed, that and you better be careful. You, Mark? It well, you? when he, yes, when General Powell calls you and tells you <laughs> something, it worries you. Yeah. And um, so we have to be careful. We have to pick what we're going to do carefully. We have to be thoughtful. We can't get into too many things. We have to be very uh, specialized. But but that's why we've been able to be successful in Indiana. We've been successful in Georgia, of course. North Carolina is still going on. And we're also really working on gender equality with women, pay equality. You but know, that's a major. But some people calling you a bully, though, Mark. Now, now you're getting the B word. Mm -hmm. Level the yeah, two. Yeah, that's true. And honestly, that surprises me. And I'll tell you why. You know, we, what we're saying to these uh, governors or state senators, hey, if you're going to discriminate against our employees, then we're going to have to reduce our investment, and we're not going to be able to bring as many people, customers, mm -hmm. to your state. I'm and sorry. Some are threatening some... to take their factories out, and they're. You know, their oh, assets out. Absolutely. And then the basically governor governors will say, well, that's bullying us. Well, it's not bullying us. We're just telling you what our employees demand yeah. that we tell you and what our customers demand that we tell you, which is you have to change your ways. You have to support everyone. And that's uh, what's worked out so well in Indiana, Georgia, and I hope North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Salesforce announced a deal last month with Amazon. Tell us about that deal. Well, we're really excited about working with Amazon, which is running on their infrastructure. Today, we announced another deal. We're buying an incredible company, Demandware, which is, lets every one of our customers become an Amazon. So uh, for, uh, we're buying a company for $3 billion in uh, Boston. Uh, the, the whole industry is transforming right now. It's so exciting. We've never seen so much innovation in our industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of chess pieces yeah. getting uh, played out. And so... That, that's what's going on. You have said that in, uh, artificial intelligence is the future. Yes. Well, I think more than the future, you're going to see the biggest trend and shift in technology ever will be artificial intelligence over the next one to two decades. And that includes things like machine learning, basic data science, and also deep learning. We've seen these incredible things. I'm sure you saw where Google was able to beat, beat Go. this Go master. Yeah. This is a big deal. This really shows that this software is advancing. We have technology at our company that's able to diagnose um, victims of a stroke and immediately tell you, is this person qualified for a thrombiotic drug or not? That was, you know, something that required a radiologist before. Now a piece of software can do that work. As you know, some people have expressed some concern, Elon Musk and others, uh, that artificial intelligence could get out of control and we could be creating um, robots and also people, uh, machines that are smarter than 
Yes, I people. saw the Terminator movie also. <laughs> and no, this is Elon oh, Musk and right. Bill Gates and yeah. Stephen Hawking and well, people like that. I agree that there's definitely opportunities that this technology can advance and, mm -hmm. and move in directions we might not want it to move. Unless we do what? Well, I think we have to have the dialogue. We're going to have to have regulation. We're going to have to um, govern how this technology evolves. This is really important. This is not the only technology that is in this category. We have genetic technology like CRISPR that's in that category, too. We have a lot of exciting new technologies. I mean, we're in this fourth industrial revolution. And what we talked about earlier, which is moving from shareholders to stakeholders, that's a critical part of the fourth industrial revolution. AI genetic engineering, there's a lot of new technologies in the fourth industrial revolution, virtual reality, augmented reality. We're in an incredible age. But and this, Mark, is, Mark, this is amazing what's happening. This is the thing about you, Mark Benioff. You, you dream big, you think big. Your company was named five years in a row by Forbes magazine, one of the most admired companies in the world. You're eight feet tall. And so I'm thinking, what is it about you that sort of drives your passion to do what you do? Well, I, you know, what in drives, word. Yeah. listening, you know, yeah. Nick, the guy to your left there, you know, is kind of a guru, and he said to me once, he said, Mark, if you're going to be successful, then you need to really listen much more deeply <laughs> than you are. And that's how gender and equality came to you. That's also how gender equality yeah. came to me, because I was just having a nice day, you know, in my office, and two of our very strong women in our company came in and said, you need to make sure we're being paid the same as men. And uh, we weren't. did, well, we did that. We had to make a $3 million adjustment in our salaries. And that is, that's deep listening. Yes. Yeah. We like that. <clears throat> applause, applause on that. All Thank from you. the guru over here. Well, right. you know, right. he says you got to listen deeply. Yeah, he does. And put it all together and create the poetry. And, you know, that applies to CEOs because yeah. we can kind of get out of that box. And when you get out of the listening box, you can get into a very uh, complex situation with your customers, the market. But if you're listening, and, and you know, another person who always said that is Steve Jobs. You know, he was a Bravo very deep. Mm -hmm. Bravo. Thank you very much. You. Mark Benioff, thank you so thank much. Thank you.